I'd like to call the meeting to order, select board meeting for Monday, April 22nd, 2024. On uh, the 15th of April, we had a vicious dog hearing in this room. And at the end of that hearing, we, made by motion, decided to continue that hearing. And it is number two on our agenda. And what I would like to suggest is that uh, we reconvene that meeting tonight, but that we do that under other business after we've done everything else in that way, uh, because that will be in deliberative session and uh, we will be um, asking you all to leave while the, while the select board makes its final decision in regards to that. So we will continue that later, if that's okay? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Do we need to make a motion in that regard? I would make a motion that you reconvene as the select board dealing with the vicious dog hearing. It was a different circumstance than what you're dealing with tonight. So I'll uh, entertain a motion to reconvene the vicious dog hearing. So moved. Second. So I got a motion by Richard, second by George. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Agenda changes and additions. No, I do not have them. none <clears throat> approving minutes uh, there are as warned there were two sets of minutes warned that needed to be approved, but they were actually already approved. So I just want to say the minutes of 329 and the minutes of 4 2 April 2nd were already approved and they, that was done at the uh, meeting on April 5th. So that is done. So I'm going to move on to number two, approve the special, uh, the select board special do Hamill pit minutes from the 1st of April, 2024. So moved. I got a motion to approve. Second. Second by George. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from April 1st? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Number three, approve the minutes uh, for our select board meeting on the 1st of April, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 1st, 2024. Second. Got a motion by Richard, second by George. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from 1st of April, 2024? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous as well. Minutes from April 15th, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 15th, 2024. Second. Got a motion by Richard, second by George. Discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from April 15th, 2024? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous as well, Judy. Approve the minutes from the 18th of April, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 18th, 2024. Second. My motion by Richard and a second by George. Discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from the 18th of April, 2024? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous, Judy. And finally, the minutes from April 5th, 2024. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 5th, 2024. Aye. Motion by Richard, second by George. Mm -hmm. Discussion? Yes. <clears throat> I think there's a typo. Um, the, uh, the second motion made, motion made by Chris Palamo, approve the minutes of April 2nd, 2023. I think it means 24. Okay. What page is that on? Uh, I got, I got 16 or 51, okay. if yeah. by the packet that we're working mm -hmm. with. Okay. So we got that one change. That's, correct. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Unless I'm missing something. Any other I'm discussion? Missing. Okay. All those in favor of the motion with that change? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. I don't think we've ever approved this many minutes in a meeting. We've had a lot of meetings. We've had a lot of meetings. We've had a lot of meetings. Town manager update under new business. Um, 
I would ask the um, board, we've had a chance to look at the contract. I would ask before a uh, motion to approve the town manager contract. I'll make a motion to approve the town manager contract. I will second it. Okay, so we have a motion by uh, Richard and a second by Laura. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. <laughs> and official. now that it's Static. official, oh. I will introduce our new town manager who is in the room. And uh, his name is Brent Raymond. And uh, we are we're very excited to uh, welcome Brent to Morristown. We had uh, we had over a hundred applications for this job. We had a uh, selection committee that was uh, that was uh, put together by several members of the audience here that are here tonight, and they forwarded three names to us, and we had a series of interviews as a select board, and we were uh, successful in coming up with Brent as our new town manager. So, I would uh, I would welcome you very much. I don't, Brent, I don't know if you want to say a couple of words. I wasn't expected to, but uh, you don't have come on up, come on up to the microphone if you don't mind. And introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Brent Raymond. Uh, I'll turn this way a little bit too. Uh, born and raised in Swanton, Vermont. Uh, my grandfather was a. Uh, raised here in, in Morrisville. So I'm very excited to uh, take on this responsibility for the townspeople and to uh, you know, create the improvements that the select board is looking for and to work with everybody. So thank you so much. Uh, it's been a wonderful process and you have a lot of committed uh, community members in this town. So I'm really excited to work for you. So thank you. Thank you very much, thank Brent. You, Thank you for coming tonight, Brent. And it's my understanding that you will try to attend our our um, select board meetings until you officially become the town manager. All the more on my calendar. So. Okay, great. Thank you. Maybe Welcome. Yeah. Pardon me. We have a date. We have a date on or before June second. So right. the contract speaks to on or before June second, and we'll probably be able to clarify that at a future select board meeting. Thank you. Um, number two, Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. Can I, can I hang on one sec? Sure. Um, just, I wanted to be clear. I thought you were going to do this. I apologize for jumping in. Uh, very specific thank you to um, our committee members. Yes. Thank you. Um, yes. Jamie Brewster, yeah. uh, Sarah Wasserman, um, Nancy, Nancy Banks. Banks, and Monty Mason. Um, uh, certainly for the select board, you guys did an amazing amount of work um, to get the information to us. I also want to thank Tom Cothier, who took it upon himself to push through a petition and to the 225 uh, people that signed that petition, um, because two select boards did not push the article forward. And thank you to Tom, who pushed the petition through, and we now have a manager. And what? Yeah. Oh, Sarah Antina, yes, yeah, so yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. Number two under new business, Board of Liquor and Control, uh, Tobacco Control. I would need a motion to recess the select board meeting. I'll make a motion to recess the select board meeting and use Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. I will second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we are now in liquor and tobacco. We usually take these separately. Do we have do we have any tobacco at all or is it all liquor? There is one tobacco. No, there's, there's three tobacco. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at minutes. Yeah, there's a lot of those. One with yellow. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 
So I would, uh, and Jason Luno has. He's reviewed the list and sent an email to Sarah and I that he had no issues with anyone on this list. Okay, great. Good. I'll, uh, are we, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the liquor license as listed. Do, we, do I need to read through? We all usually them? read them down the list, maybe not everything on the spreadsheet, but just their names. I'll make a motion to accept uh, Bombastic and Industries LLC, Claremont Restaurant Incorporated, Lost Nation Sorry. Brewery LLC, Morrisville Food Co op LLC, RL Valley Inc., RL Valley Inc., it's two Maplefields, uh, 1013 LLC, Vermont Harvest Catering. And Lost Nation. Oh, I said Lost Nation. Oh, okay. no, Lost Nation Brewery LLC. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I have a motion, a second? I'll second that. I got a second by Richard. Jason has no issues with this. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. Tobacco license renewals? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the renewals of RL Valley, uh, which is Maplefields on the Port Street, RL Valley, which is Maplefields on 15 West, and DG Retail LLC, which is Dollar General. So I have a motion by George and a second by Richard. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. That would be unanimous. And a request to cater permits. I'll make a motion to approve the request to cater permits by 1013 LLC Music Festival. I have a motion. Second. Oh, yep. I have a second by George. Any discussion? Who's 1013? <clears throat> 257 Portland Street. Moves. Oh, moves, oh, moves. right. That's right, thanks. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. Okay, that would be unanimous. <laughs> Second. Okay, I need a motion to come uh, to close liquor and tobacco and, and, re and reconvene select board meeting. Okay, great. Thank you. So I have a motion to uh, close liquor and tobacco and reconvene select board meeting. Second, Second by George. Yep. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving on. Fire department truck. So would you like to start this? I, I can. Um, it's a, a short story. The fire department is replacing their primary engine. Um, it was approved on town meeting day. Um, Denny has worked with the fire department um, truck committee. It, it wasn't all the officers, so I'm not sure. Um, and they proposed the um, specs you see in your hand, um, in your hands out. So at this point, we're at, I'm just bringing it to people, um, the select board and the voters, just to let you know that we're gonna order a new engine. Um, it came in within the parameters of what we thought it was gonna cost. Um, it does take almost two years to arrive. So putting it in now, um, means we all might forget that this happened, but in two years, a fire truck should, should be here. Um, and I'm working with finance on um, exactly how much we might put down. You know, interest rates are changing, so we'll have to see if it um, is better than what they're gonna offer us for a down payment interest rate. Um, otherwise, we're ju we just plan to put down a little bit of uh, down payment. And just to reiterate, these are custom because of the size of our fire. Building, correct. They are customized or required to be because the doors of the fire station are a little narrower than what's standard now. So we have to get a non standard truck to fit into that. And is that uh, attributing to the time factor in getting them? Not really. I mean, I just signed a paperwork last summer for a fire truck and it was around two years at that time, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's just, so, it takes a while. We have no action that we need to take on this. The voters have already approved Correct. this. So, Correct. So this is really just information right. for the board but and I for mean, the public. We're in that, even if it is a manager form of government, I think it's important as a taxpayer. If I wasn't sitting here, I'd want to know that a, a many hundred thousand dollar truck um, mm -hmm. is being ordered. And this is what some of those savings accounts are paying for too. So I think it's just kind of important to know. 
Okay. Question, John? Yeah. Carrie, I think it's Carrie. Can be you. You know. Um, this truck is, is will be ordered. Mm -hmm. When is the price set on order or on delivery? I mean, order. We're talking about a two-year span. Order. Order. Okay. Yep. The price is set on that proposal that you have that was signed by the um, representative. Okay. And the representative for this company just happens to live in Franklin County, Vermont. So they're kind of local. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Denny's comfortable with, with everything else here. Okay. There. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any more discussion? Okay. Oxbow Park update. So, um, the Oxbow Park, as we all know, is a, a, a very important resource in the town of Morristown. And uh, unfortunately, it has been flooded multiple times. It was flooded just twice in the last, um, in the last year with substantial damage. And as we're kind of moving forward here, I think most of us understand that there's an upper deck and there's a lower deck. And the upper deck, there's there's already um, there's already a, a concert series out for Wednesday nights, which is great. I think most of us will be happy to, to hear that. I know a lot of us attend that. The community gardens are uh, ready to be occupied, and it looks like there's going to be a lot of activity with that as well. So I think the upper deck, you know, we've, we've already got some plans out there. I, what, what tonight is really about is the lower deck. And, you know, before I move on from the upper deck, we're going to continue to explore what needs to be done there. That's not to say that's a done deal by any means, but we'll continue that conversation. But the lower deck, the conversation on the lower deck really began about six months ago. An individual who's in the audience right now, who I think may come up and, and speak to this, brought up the idea of trying to enhance that lower deck. And um, with tree plantings in particular. And that's where the conversation began and no fault of uh, administration. I mean, we've had, we didn't have an administrator for quite a while. We, we do now and we've had a lot of stuff on our plate. But we're back to back to this discussion now, and um, I'm glad to see there's a number of people in the audience here tonight that I think are interested in what's going on in that lower deck. Uh, I know there's members of the Morrisville Conservation Commission here tonight, and they may be speaking to this. Uh, and we do have somebody here from the Lamoille County Conservation District, and that's Peter Danforth. And I'm going to invite him to come up first because he's the one who really got this whole conversation going about the lower deck and got this whole conversation going about <coughs> tree planting and got this whole conversation going about what we're going to do with this important resource that unfortunately um, has, a, has a very strong likelihood of uh, flooding in the future. And so we're we're going to have a conversation here about rehabilitation and mitigation. And so, Peter, if you don't mind coming up, I'd sure. give you the microphone. Hello, everyone. Yeah, so, again, yeah, I'm Peter Danforth, the district manager for uh, Lamoille County Natural Resources Conservation District. That's the full title. We shortened it to Lamoille County Conservation District because it was easier for people to say. Uh, so, the districts are there's 14 districts in the state. We've all been tasked to basically deliver conservation programs. Uh, and also to help implement them. Um, and uh, we've been around since about 1945, um, after the Dust Bowls, and to, our primary sort of task was to help uh, with erosion and healthy soils, but that's brought into clean water, and now to um, you know, programs that will help with climate change. Um, so uh, about six months ago, I did propose a tree planting. Uh, at the time, it was a large scale tree planting, which was the entire perimeter. This is before, well, this is kind of in between the two floods, if I recall. And, um, and we kind of looked at the area and where we decided, well, well, let's start with a small one on the one side that has less damage uh, and see what needs to happen with the, um, I guess, east side, which got heavily eroded with gully erosion uh, around December uh, after that flood. Um, so, I did bring some materials here. Um, 
I don't know what you wanted me to do. If put them on the, put me put them here. So I can put them on the end. I can too. indicate what they are. Uh, one of them is a Vermont statute, a municipal, uh, municipal and county government law that talks about uh, the rules of tree planting on riparian areas. Uh, and the third page, I could pass somebody's around to if you want to indicate, <coughs> kind of in highlight, uh, what towns can and can't do in regards to tree planting. Um, so I don't know if you want to pass that around. And then I did bring our newsletter, which just came out. So if anyone wants to pick that up, I can put it on the um, table outside. And then the map, I could pass around to you. Just a small area that we propose to plan at some point. If we're getting permission to do so. Um, so yeah, the, the, so that's one part. Um, also, we, you know, as conservation districts, we work in, in education and outreach. We have a summer camp. We work with a lot of high schools. Uh, we work with a lot of elementary schools. And, um, you know, it was suggested and I, I, by other people aside from myself that maybe, you know, with the, the lower deck could potentially at some point be re-naturalized, revegetated, and maybe be a natural classroom for the students from the various institutions to come down and use. And that can take many forms, shapes and forms. And, I, and Carrie, you too also mentioned the fact that, you know, maybe there should be a really legit master plan about that um, lower deck. And uh, the district would be more than happy to help with that, uh, along with other, any other partner organizations we work with. So anyway, that's all I got for now. Okay. And so the plan, the suggestion at this point is to to do tree plantings on the east, on the, the west, west side. side. Yeah, uh, yeah. there's a small portion there that isn't already buffered. Some of the areas are buffered already. So we kind of, sort of an amorphous blob, but it's approximately three quarters of an acre. It would be about 300, approximately 300 stems. So we use bare root. They're about two to four feet in length. Uh, various conservation varieties. We use, utilize 18 to 20 different species. Uh, the reason we plant, I mean, that's a fairly medium density. We could be planted in higher densities, uh, but density is important because you want a certain amount of survival rate um, with the trees, but you also expect a certain mortality and you understand that there's a natural progression as to which trees will take over and become evident there. Um, and then with the new clean water service provider funding that's happened in the state, um, the different um, regional uh, planning commissions have been tasked with doling out money to not only do projects like this, but also to give maintenance money to. In the past, we've been able to plant trees and maybe get two years worth of maintenance funding. But after that, it's been pretty much up to the landowner we're working with. Uh, but now if these uh, clean water service providers take adopt these programs, um, then they could have up to 10 years or more of maintenance and supplies and whatever you might need. So that's a good thing. So, you know, the state is obviously wants buffer zones to happen. Um, this post flood uh, moment we're, we're living in, um, it's highly suggested that areas that are close to rivers um, are not further developed. And if anything that they're, they're revegetated or, or to allow for flood uh, mitigation, flood absorption, for lessening soil erosion, for wildlife habitat, um, for clean water and phosphorus in the Lake Champlain as well. There's a lot of money for that. And these uh, tree plantings are really inexpensive ways of achieving all those goals. <clears throat> They're not high budget projects. And the grant money we get, it fully funds these tree plantings, so the towns would not have to pay anything except we provide some sort of in-kind resources. So if there's someone I need to work with in order to do it from the town, that would be their time. And volunteers for planting. So the volunteers would add up as a match towards the grant that we'd receive. So um, on the whole, it's very, very inexpensive and easy thing to do. So it's really, it's, it's free for the town. It's free for the town, yeah. Yeah. Monetarily and, speaking, yes. Yeah. And you've reached out to the Morristown Conservation Commission Regarding We've this, we've talked about a few different things, including. Yeah. <laughs> well, they've reached out to me. Let's put it that way, and uh, and I'm glad they did. And yeah. um, there's, there's other projects as well that we're looking at. Well, they've reached out to me as well. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. great. 
Um, yeah, it's interesting. The things that you're talking about right now were on WCAX this morning. There was a segment on there, and they were doing uh, in the lower Winooski River Valley the same thing for all the same reasons. Yep, yep. And, and these tree, have, tree yeah, these tree plantings can certainly help to mitigate the flooding issues that we're that we're having. Yeah, they, they create um, an area that can be absorbed. So you're basically bringing in water. You have per, impermeous surface. So, I mean, permeous surface, per, pervious surface rather than impervious surface. So if you're going to be developing down there with anything other than trees, it's going to be creating issues that would raise the flood levels and create damage to those impervious surfaces. Yeah. So it, it allows some absorption and to evaporation as well. Yeah. Can we ask questions? You sure can. Um, the, uh, I'm in the process of taking down a bunch of trees that have grown forever. Uh -huh. um, so I'm curious, how long is it going to take uh, these trees? Like, how tall are they? And how long will it take for the roots to actually, like, I, I'm concerned about planting all these trees and then a big flood comes uh -huh. and they're gone. So what's... Well, when they're at that size, it's almost better. <laughs> Because when they're small, they can actually be flattened down into the ground. I've had this happen a few times. Mm -hmm. They're main rooted. Some may, if it's an erosion fa uh, feature that occurs during a flood, then you may lose some. Uh, but that's sort of what you're up against. You know, you you never know what's going to happen. But you're better off having them there than not. Um, I we just planted out in Woolcott, um, the Fish and Wildlife near um, Elmer Pond Road, and um, we planted between the floods, so the big flood and then the one in December, um, we had about 95% survival rate on stems this big, mm -hmm. and they were all budding out, and they were doing fine, even though it was obvious that they'd been washed through up to two feet above them. So because they're small, they're, the, the resistance level on them is like they'll go down and come back up, and you can go out, and with the maintenance funds that we'll get too, we can make sure that, okay, this area got destroyed, we'll pre-plant. Now, it will take a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, if you get a tamarack that you plant that's this big, it might take 20 years to get to 15 feet, you know, but it, that's pretty fast. Mm -hmm. But the idea is to just plant ahead, you know, try to stay ahead of it. Um, you know, you could go in with larger elements, it would be much more expensive to do so. And if, if they haven't rooted in and they get damaged, it's going to be a lot more of a problem than a smaller um, Tree. And what, so. what type trees are you putting down there? I'm assuming ones that have a deeper root base as opposed to the some of the evergreen trees that, the shallow. Yeah, that, are, that, that you would find in those areas, generally speaking, Deep, you know, yeah. so we have shrub willows, black willows, hibiscus cranberries, or danny berries, or uh, cottonwood even, uh, we could try that, you know, there's certain, yeah. because of uh, the way temperature change is going, some of these, some oaks that normally wouldn't be able to at this area could be planted in but um uh, yeah there's i have a list of probably 15 or 20 that we normally use uh, okay. birches yellow birches white is the window birches. still available to plant this spring uh so i did okay so i have this juggling act i have to do every year between our tree sale and the amount of tree plantings we're doing and i never know how much to get um but fortunately we can play in the spring and the fall and uh, either way, in the spring, it's usually between now and mid to late May. And the fall, October, early November, um, we've had a lot of success uh, planting in the fall too. You know, so that's an option as well to so just sort of do continual plantings here and there um, when we have the funds or the trees available. Uh, theoretically, the amount of trees I have right now, I could uh, have enough to do that small area that um, I put in the map. Um, that would be approximately up to 300 trees. And I may have not enough for another planting we're doing, but I can just finish that in the fall. So I have that flexibility, you know, to juggle, so and to speak. Do we need state approval, FEMA approval? And given that if it washes down, it goes into the dam, do we need trustee approval? So according to the laws, there is no permitting required to plant trees in public land, municipal land. Um, so no, okay. and the short answer is no. There, um, these tree plantings and buffer zones are the easiest permitting process because there isn't really any permitting required for them. Uh, even in um, private land, we just need the private landowner's approval. 
Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, that makes it easier, inexpensive, and the lack of permitting, yeah, is absolutely key. In fact, the statute that you're highlighting for us yeah, right here <laughs> makes it even easier for that. Yes. For these yeah. plannings to occur as. Yeah, there's a few little things above the highlighted thing that says, well, you know, what may be needed to be permitted, but usually it involves buildings of some sort or yeah. structures or. Um, but as far as just planting, um, unless there's some previous obscure bylaw or something that, you know, that was put in place by a municipality, it wouldn't affect it. And I don't, most, to most of my knowledge, there isn't in the state. But uh, that's something to look at there. Yeah. And they highlighted that highlight is actually on the state site. So I didn't highlight that. That, that was, was highlighted. That wasn't, I think it came out of maybe a conversation or two that's happened around this. And then they just emboldened it and said, look, you can plant without permitting here in public riparian areas specifically. Other questions? Thank you. Thank Welcome. you, Peter. Yeah, thank you. I guess my question to, to Don and to Carrie is that um, this is one aspect of it, but are we going to address the big gully that's going through? I mean, there's more to that lower deck than the planting. Uh, and that's what I think in terms of long-term planning is, you know, what, what are we going to, what are our thoughts? <laughs> well, the gully has been filled in. Yeah. Um, so that's been repaired. That's been. Was that FEMA or was that town money? Town. Yeah. And actually, I think we got some. Um, FEMA. Or no, we got some crushed up stone from a nearby <clears throat> neighbor who was having to get rid of it. So it, we didn't even have to pay for that. It was free while they were trying to re restore it. We did not add any. So just, the purpose of this discussion is yeah. just to finalize what began, as Peter said, the last trees, October. And, you know, they've been waiting pretty patiently to hear from yeah. us as to what we want to do. Uh, yeah, so I guess I'm asking is, do we need to have a conversation about bigger picture? Well, you I sure think do. we do yeah. have to have a bigger, yeah, bigger yeah, picture conversation. And that's where the upper deck comes in as well. Yeah, okay. And, you know, there are grants to help create um some consensus around a municipal uh, like a municipal grant about um master plan right so that right that would involve all the partners it would include employees um just so that Peter. everybody's clear that this tonight is specifically for the trees yeah that's correct okay. right i mean you know we have we've made progress in hiring people but we've been short-staffed um yep. in yep. more than just one area so no long-term planning for Oxbo has been done. Okay. Yet. Yet. Hi. Uh, for the select board, the scale of the tree plan. Can you, plan sorry, Todd, can sorry, you introduce Todd yourself? Thomas. I'm your community appointed uh, floodplain coordinator. So as the floodplain permit, I agree there's no per permit person. I agree there's no permit necessary. It doesn't mean this is a good idea to do so. If you're planting a, a few dozen trees along the perimeter of the river to help stabilize the soils and the banks, it's a great project. In fact, I think I actually the last time Peter did this, I helped plant them with a shovel myself. I'm concerned about the large amount of trees proposed, the amount of fill that would put into the floodway of the river. If we're talking about a few dozen trees, no big deal. If we're talking about hundreds of trees, and this is phase one, there could be many hundreds of trees. This is the floodway. So the difference is the Conservation Commission should be applauded. They voted to put trees in the upper deck of the Oxbow which is in the flood fringe, which trees are great. Put all the trees there you want. The lower deck where it's being proposed in the floodway, the floodway is in the mathematical bounds, the banks of the river. You're going to be adding fill to the river and you'll be exacerbating flooding issues if you plant these trees proposed. Again, if you wanna plant a few trees for help with soil, soil stabilization, uh, help with bank erosion, great. The amount of trees here, if these trees grow to be two feet wide, the little bath, uh, back of the envelope math I just did, at two feet wide in a couple of years, well, obviously 10, 15 years, you're talking about 5,000 truckloads of fill you're adding into the riverbanks of the Oxbow. That riverbank, the floodway, it's a full bathtub. When you put stuff in it, you're pushing water on other people's property. You're flooding someone else out with all these trees. So I like trees. Trees are great. Plant them on the upper deck. You can plant them on the top half of the lower deck. Do not plant them all the way down, at least not in that number, all the way down the lower deck of the Oxbow. You're making flooding problems worse. I've given my opinion on this. 
of an engineer give my opinion on give his opinion on this. We both agree you're making flooding problems worse because of the amount of trees proposed. That's so all. what engineer? What uh, engineer said that? Uh, emails with Don. I had an email engineer of the Northeast Kingdom that I work with on occasion. Well, it sounds like we have a difference of opinion. We might need to pay for our own engineer. So I would just say, I mean, I just want to be clear. Yeah, we're talking 300 trees. So I, I did some very quick math, just so everybody knows. If you did, and these are trees that are less than an inch in diameter. And you can do this. This is pretty, this is just basic high school <clears throat> geometry. But you can calculate the surface area of these 300 trees. And it comes out to less than two square feet. It's, it, well, they're, so small, it's, they're small trees now. They're but small trees, they're but, they, but they're not trees. all going to survive either. That's the reason we're putting so many in, or this is the, that's the that's the reason for the proposal, is put them in because if you go to any area where they do any tree plantings, whether it's on the side of rivers or whether it's a, an area mm. that's been clear cut for forestry, they put in way more trees than they ever plan on having survived because there's just not that much room for them. So the 300 trees are not all going to survive to be two feet in diameter, not even close. Um, the mortality over, and to get to a two-foot tree in that area is going to take a long time. I mean, I think one of the great, great reasons for this is we've got to start, we've got to start, you know, uh, repairing and mitigating what's what's been happening down there we, we we can't continue to kick this can down the road and do nothing look if we don't do anything with the lower oxbow it will revegetate itself it will retree itself if we just walk away from that for the next hundred years it will do that it probably frankly should do that because that's it's part of the river that lower deck really belongs to the river and the river's going to slowly reclaim it. It's either going to reclaim it by washing it all away and washing it downstream and impacting all our facilities and our dams and whatnot downstream. Or what we have a chance to do here is we have a chance to do something, start now, and start you know, helping this river and helping the lower deck uh, be what it wants to be, certainly what it once was. And we can save that. The fill that you're talking about won't erode away the material that's washing downstream will get caught. I mean, you, all you have to do is go up to Tinney Bridge and see what the few trees that are standing there are doing right now. We're worried about these 300 twigs washing into the dam. Go down to Tinney Bridge and look at what six trees have cleaned out of the river last year. It is way more. It is many dump truck loads. It's way, way more than what these three, 300 trees would ever account for. And that would have washed downstream. I would argue if you go to, go to any river in Vermont right now that still has a forest on both banks, and you can see visually, it is so obvious what's happening. These trees are filtering all the crud they're filtering all these twigs, and some of these twigs are solid trees that would otherwise, otherwise wash down. They are um, holding back the water. Yeah, they're holding back the water so that it doesn't shoot downstream at some severe velocity. One of the problems we have on our rivers is the water's going downstream way too fast. As it goes down too fast, it causes destruction. It causes problems. That's what we want to do. We want to we slow this water down so that it's not destroying what's downstream. We want to find places for this water to be held. Um, we went to, there was a, uh, sorry to go on about this, but it's just, it's important to me. Uh, we, we had a flood mitigation meeting at LCPC not too long ago, and there was a couple of individuals from uh, Morristown that joined me in that. And Wolcott and Johnson are doing a lot to, and, you know, Peter's talked about it, not just tree plantings, but finding places for water to be held so that it doesn't all go downstream and doesn't cause the damage downstream that water is, is, um, is causing. We don't want the water to go downstream really quickly. We want it to go down slowly. That's why we're trying to bring back wetlands. That's why, that's why Wolcott is trying to find areas to develop wetlands. That's why Johnson's trying to find uh, room to develop wetlands and find ways to um, mitigate this this flooding that's going to happen. I don't think there's a soul in this room that's arguing that flooding isn't going to happen again. 
it's how bad it's going to be and what are we going to do to begin to take some action. Doing nothing clearly doesn't work. Um, thinking that we're smarter than nature doesn't seem to work very well. As I'll just reiterate that the, the river is going to take back that lower oxbow. It would be really nice to have it still there when the river does take it back, and it'd be really nice to have the vegetation, the riparian vegetation there, that's going to help to hold on to all that material. Yeah, I guess my part of my concern is, you know, there was a huge ditch. We've now filled it in, so now when that water hits, is it just going to go over? And the, ultimately, the question is, how many times are we going to fix this? Right. You know, and, and granted, we're not spending money, but it's still a lot of time of our highway. Um, and, you know, when is it time to throw up our hands, put a barrier between the upper and lower, and move on? Laura, you're not allowed to fill the lower. There's no fill no, on no, the uh, way. Just so you know. Oh, but they filled in the uh, valley. I just heard that myself, and that's a, that, that could be a, flood. That's, uh, that yeah, could be a I, violation. I, this is what they did after the last summer floods. I was the town surprised. put in 124 yards of gravel, 89 yards of topsoil, and 210 yards of stone. That's the fill we're putting in, only to repeat the same process over and over again. It's gonna go and I don't disagree with most of what Don said. Trees are good. Trees filter things. Trees yeah. help with bank erosion. Don't put them all in the floodway. You're putting too much in the floodway. You're pushing water in other people's properties. When we just bought out a, we just bought out a house on Route 15, that was flooded and there was a house next door that the water came within an inch of getting in their house. If we start doing this and filling our floodways, that water will be in their house next time because that will slow down the water. Those trees will act to catch debris and it will back up the river and it will back up into that house. So and I just want to make sure that and you will all it do. Just, will it come up to the upper deck, which... It will know. slow it down upstream. I just want to make upstream. sure you all knew is I feel like it's my duty. I am the I am the flood zone expert for the town. I'm your appointed person. I don't recommend this plan at this scale. I just, just want to reiterate the 300 sticks that we're putting in the ground are you're not going to be able to measure the, the height of water that it would ever cause to go up. The state of sticks. Are going to so be an but issue. but re, rehabilitating that habitat and trying to slow the erosion that's clearly happening. The erosion that you're just referring to that you're talking about getting filled in i mean that's going to continue at some point we need we need to do something we can throw our hands up in the air and do nothing and it's just going to get worse and worse and worse i do agree with yeah. you i don't i don't want to throw money at that lower deck that's why i think it's great that the mall county mm -hmm. conservation district i know i didn't say that quite right natural resources <laughs> conservation district <laughs> is willing to get the grant money for us and bring the thousands of dollars in <clears throat> To, uh, to, to, buy these, uh, to buy these trees and also to put them in the ground. And just, could we use that $100,000 into a place that would be more permanent? Is well, it's not $100,000, it's like $6,000. Yeah. I'm just but, saying yeah. is, how much time do we spend, you know, and when do we decide to cut our losses and start putting energy into something that is gonna be there? That's, that's all. Yeah. It's a I, tough call. Yeah. And that's why I'm, I'm looking for more long-term, but. I think we can see what's going to happen to yeah. we can see what's going to happen to the lower deck um, if we don't do anything. Yeah. It's going to disappear. Hi, I'm Tom Stames, and uh, one of the hats that I wear is with the Morrisville Soccer Club. I've been president of that for 20 years, and we've had we've loved the use of the, the lower deck um, of the Oxbow, and it's floods every year, and it was never an issue. Um, Water comes across it and floods just like it does on the uphill side of the, the, the other side of the river, floods across that field, but you don't see boulders and stuff on the other side of the, the, the river. The boulders evolved. This all started when that, my belief, when the gravel path was put in on the right hand side of the oxbow as you're looking down at it, there's a gravel path that was put in. It used to be all grass there, gravel path put in, and now that the river hits that, turns it up, spits it back on, carries all that gravel onto the uh, onto the uh, soccer field area, whatever. So, my belief, and I'm again, I'm no civil engineer, is that if there was grass, just grass there, <laughs> a, a good sod base, or you know, if landscape fabric was bad, was buried down in there. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not an engineer, but 
the whole issue is that the water coming across is washing that gravel. That gravel is not coming up out of the river. We're not talking about the bottom of a canyon. The, the water level is 15 or 20 feet below uh, the river. All that gravel that's on the oxbow, or was on that oxbow last week or last two weeks, is coming from the upper, the, the lower deck itself. You know, yeah. the, the upper deck got flooded with all the gravel from the from the parking lot, but the lower deck, if that was grass, dirt, the water would flow across. You'd have some logs out there. It would be easy peasy, and it was for 20 years to to clean up afterwards. We would, you know, occasionally we had one little gravel bank that would run down on the field that, you know, a couple of us volunteers would go down there and scoop it up with wheelbarrows or a little bobcat and clean it up no problem. So my contention, belief, again, I'm not still an engineer, is that there's a way to make that, to firm up that, that upper, the upper upstream side of it so that it doesn't wash all that gravel that just got pushed back there from resurfacing. Yeah. So that's, that's my belief. Planting the little trees, I'm all for planting trees to help the erosion mm -hmm. or whatever. It seems to me that the first place we should plant them would be on the upper side where we want to maintain that integrity of that bank there rather than the leeward uh, side of the river. Just if, if their intent is to take root and take hold, it seems to me that's where they should be. Some number of years ago, if I say five, it means it's 10, it means it's 15. Some trees were planted, some little apples or something, I, I don't recall, somebody might remember, on the, on the uphill side. And you know, a hole was excavated, you know, five feet to plant these trees or something, and they were plunked in. And, and those, that, where, they, where they excavated to put those trees in, that's what washed up and let the water run onto there. So I would think that we should have somebody that knows something about uh, maintaining, not, not, this isn't a pokey <laughs> thing, but somebody that knows more than I do, I should say. Um, figure a way to firm up that side Okay, Instead thank you. of us, you know, pushing that same gravel back, like Laura said, have it wash over onto the field, push it back next year. And it seems to me that if we had something, and I don't know, you know, if, if you know, burying tires down to create, you know, a barrier so it doesn't gouge down in something that wouldn't be creating a dam or adding worry about fill or, okay. you know. Okay, thank you, Tom. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask if, if People can try and limit their conversation to two minutes. I know it's hard. Oh. Uh, I know. <laughs> yeah, could you, would you mind? Yeah, because this uh, So, a quick response to a couple of comments. Um, first off, trees are not fill, trees contain fill. Let's be clear about that. Um, we did, the reason we did this, this uh, plan for the west side was because at the time we didn't know the time frame of what the town was going to do in regards to the fill in those uh, gully erosions. And so we just figured, oh, well, we can do what we can when we can do it. Um, ideally, you would want to make the buffers extremely wide. In the past, we've done very narrow buffers and they can only do so much. Uh, if you really want to have a system regrow, you need to make those buffers wider. If you want to have a soccer field, for instance, you would need buffers on either side to protect that and prevent that fill from entering to the soccer field and create less of an issue of repairing the soccer field. So I just wanted to like kind of make people understand that there's a reason, and in these the soft buffers, we call them, of trees, are important because if you try to put some kind of wall or hard riprap scenario down on that it's going to create so much force heading downstream. It's going to create flooding issues for other people downstream that are going to be far worse than if the riprap wasn't there. So we, the, the, the trees provide not only a soft buffer, but an absorption of the force um, and a containment of the force. And if you, if you have that, then you're limiting that pressure downstream as well. So this is something that you know, I could bring in about three or four state engineers, as well as um, science, river scientists from the state that would completely agree with everything I'm saying right now about the situation. So if you, if you want some of that backup, I can get them here in an army uh, to tell you. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. 
And also, while we're waiting for the next person, I was make, I was aware that the department or the highway department went down there. I'm not saying the entire thing was filled. They just were concerned about some safety things. So before that takes on a life of its own um, <laughs> as a possible flood violation, I am. They did work down there, and we will certainly get every permit we're supposed to get. Go ahead. Mason Kemmer, LaPorte Road. I am a civil engineer, and I will agree with Peter's um, plan and Don's comments. They all sound spot on to me. Thank you very That's much. All. Thank you. I know there's members of the Morristown Conservation Commission here. I don't know if they want to step up and offer some, some words. They're Jerry Throne. I'm not speaking for the Morristown Conservation Commission. These are my own opinions. OK. Yeah. Uh, I believe uh, what, what Peter was suggesting is a, uh, a, a selection of different varieties. And we're calling them trees, but we know they start out real small. And but some of them, I think, Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, don't go to two foot diameter. Yeah, they're all different sizes and shapes. Right, so different. some can remain yeah, some are low to the ground, shrub like. Yes, yeah. Right. Mix them up. For instance, my own experience uh, is with uh, Radozier dogwood. They're used and they're recommended uh, to be used along stream banks to help uh, control erosion. My own personal experience with controlling erosion uh, goes back to uh, in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, uh, putting in erosion control measures for an earthen pier built in the 1800s that needed to be stabilized. The, uh, the Delaware River at that point had five or six foot tides. So you had this wave action and tide action. It had to be a very robust type thing. Uh, what was done there could be done here as well. Uh, if you wanted to stabilize the edge of the <laughs> river banks, we could go into that uh, more in to more detail later, but just know that there, there are measures and things that can be done that are natural looking. They're not hard surfaces. Oh, one more thing. I think, I think the, you know, the, from the consensus of what I'm hearing here is that it's probably a real good idea to have some kind of engineering review, professional engineering review, and, and to have a plan for the entire lower deck, uh, maybe even the upper deck, yeah. but that, in my opinion, I think that the three quarters of an acre that Peter is uh, suggesting should be planted with the materials that he is suggesting as kind of like a pilot project until there's time to uh, uh, have a full uh, discussion and possibly uh, studies performed. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, my name is Tom Puglia. I'd like to reiterate what he said. I think the town should get their own uh, engineer to look at that. Uh, I'm sure you get a lot of people to back you and I'm sure, you know, that's, that's good. But I think we should have an independent person here to check out what is the best thing for our town at that spot, because it's going to flood again. We know it. Uh, and, uh, and just to be planting in trees that we, we're going to hope that some make it is not the way to do that. I think we should have a, an engineer, the town, pays for and go by his. I know you're pretty strong on it, Don, uh, and you are too, but let's get somebody independent in there that, that, uh, to take a look at it. In the meantime, I guess I'm looking at the board right now. I know Peter's here tonight, and I think he's looking for you know, some, uh, an idea of where we're going to go. Um, do we want to take some action? Do we want to move this forward? He's got a presentation out there to plant 300 trees on the western side of the lower oxbow, or the, the lower deck on the oxbow. I would support that proposal and then also ask Kerry to um, see what a, what a study by an appropriate engineering firm or engineer that's licensed in this kind of mm -hmm. spe uh, specialty. Um, and if it, the cost is not prohibitive, then we could ask that engineer to do the long term plan, but we would have step one done that is Peter has recommended. That would be my personal position. Make that as a motion? Mm -hmm. Would you like to make that as a motion? I would. Okay, I have a motion by George to go forward with the uh, plan that Peter Danforth has put forward to plant 300 trees on the western side of the lower oxbow. With the, do I have a second? With the caveat that. Uh, a 
With the caveat that a formal engineering report will follow. Uh, I guess I would want to is know the cost of that engineering. Cost, yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, if the if the cost is reasonable, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And so, reasonable will be a select decision so about what's a reasonable cost. So we have a motion to do the planting, and with the caveat of uh, a potential engineering study down the road. Shouldn't it be a hydrologist that looks into? Hold on one sec. Hold on one sec. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, so I have a motion by George and a second by Laura. Any discussion on the part of the board before I go to Zoom? Oh, fuck. I, I, all I can say to that is I think we the Oxbow is definitely a resource that we need to try to maintain. And I know it's, it's painful for all of us to see that. Just would be painful for all of us to see it go away. Um, I think anything we can do to mitigate the, the damage from the, the flood is something that we need to, we need to look into. Who is that up there? Nancy. Nancy? Yeah, that... I, I really think we should have a hydrologist. Is this, this is Nancy Donovan? Yes. Okay. We should really have someone who specifically uh, deals with water, and it should be a hydrologist. I think to go from past experiences with floods, uh, we're in unprecedented climate change. It, that's, a, that's a fact. And we need a hydrologist that has the know-how about what we plant, um, if we plant, and there certainly shouldn't be any hard surfaces down there. I think Laura makes a great point. We need to be moving forward. Um, we don't want to put a lot of effort and time and money. Um, maybe we should be looking at higher ground and and looking forward to where we need to be. Instead of bemoaning what we have, maybe we should be putting our efforts somewhere else. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, I would just say, oh, Mason Kemmer, LaPorte Road. Um, I would say civil engineer would be the appropriate resource for this. Um, hydrologist, definitely good with the water specifically, but not the runoff, erosion, the whole big picture of river, land, all together type deal. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion. Go ahead. Mary Lou Nichols Morrisville. I spend a lot of time at the Tenney Bridge. Uh, with my dog and all those there, and I've watched that whole erosion. Um, it looks like that, I don't know when, I've only been here nine years, but it looks like somewhere along the line there was a whole lot of work done with all those rocks that are down there. Does anybody know the history of that, or did, was that Morrisville Water and Light that did all that work? I'm wondering if that isn't the state when they replaced Tinney Bridge that did no, all it's, that it's rip been, It's been there for a long, long time, these rocks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay so because that, yeah, because water and lights protecting there. Is that a pump house it, there? It, well, the first pump house is gone. Yeah. The second one's good. Yeah. But is it, it looks like somebody along the this is we're not reinventing the wheel here. It looks like somewhere along the line there was a huge problem there at one time. So they must have had to try to figure out what to do about that because it's certainly helping not your, the t tenny part Don under the bridge, but going toward Morrisville, it's definitely helping. Yeah. There, but like you said, those dead trees come in and they form this natural barrier down there then too, which is that's Mother Nature. So Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we have a motion. I'm gonna are we all set? Okay, so one quick thing. Can can we just throw in that we like make a plan to have a committee look into this to to figure out what we're gonna do? Okay. I mean, as far as a plan, we're really going a little cart before the horse, but I'm, I'm all in favor of what's proposed. It's just like a proposing part of it and need to look at the big picture. So I would, I would ask that we would have the optical committee. Duly noted. Okay. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. So moving on, Oxbow Park events. Look at that. So, um, are you going to present this? Um, I can briefly. Um, so even with the manager form of government, we need the select board to review the application for the festival that they're planning this coming year. 
Um, so in front of you, I'm looking for my copy, there it is. Um, Boobs are doing a, I don't know if it has another more familiar name, Trish is here, but is it Oxbow just- Oxbow Music Festival. Oxbow Music Festival is seeking um, authorization or approval on their application. And it is the same as previous years. Um, there's been no changes there, but it's a very popular program. And Trisha, the, yeah. you might want to come up to the microphone because I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. <laughs> this is, uh, this festival has happened for a number of years now. More than five years. And we've not had issues with this. We have not. Jason was fine with this. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. That was Trisha Fowler. Trisha Fowler. Oh, yeah, Trisha Fowler. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so we do need a motion then to accept this application. Uh, uh, I'll make a motion uh, that we approve the Oxbow Music Festival uh, permit. Do we need more details as presented? As presented. No, that sounds good. So I have a motion by Laura, second by Richard. Any further discussion? Is this covering just the music agenda on there, or is it? Is this covering the soccer games and stuff like that going no, on? No, this is it? just what we stated. It was an Oxbow Music Festival. Yeah. Okay. It's not on any, this isn't a permit application for any other use. Okay. Yep. Right. Yep. Thank you, Tom Cloutier. Any further discussion? I just wanted to identify you. <laughs> yeah. For everyone out, out there, not that they don't recognize your voice. All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. Judy. Number seven, or number six, police. Can it wait just a bit, because we're kind of moving on, but we're almost done. Police department yeah. truck update. Um, so it's my understanding that uh, what's happening here is we do currently have a truck that needs substantial repairs correct and uh we do have in the new budget starting july 1 we do have uh budget and a new, a new truck a replacement yep Scheduled. and so what what administration is looking for is just consensus from the board i believe That's correct. to uh agree with the pre-ordering of this truck correct because um we like well we did go out to bid in anticipation of replacing it on july but just like we would do with our own vehicles. I don't think it's good practice to put a few thousand dollars into a vehicle we were gonna get rid of anyway, um, and instead order this vehicle. And it, it will show up as a purchase on paper this year, but it will be paid for in the next fiscal year. Okay. It'll just show up as that. So it, it doesn't impact the current budget? It does not. It's yeah. just that we are gonna, I'm gonna authorize the purchase of it um, and we might take possession of it maybe in June. Um, is this a cruiser? No, I, I get that. Well, I'm not sure I how. I think of police department and trucks. I think of their cruisers. What other trucks? It, it is it's, yeah. it is a cruiser. I'm it's just one not, of the cruisers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's not, yeah, we don't have just utility truck, trucks okay. like yeah. the fire department. Well, we don't have any of the SWAT vehicles. I was <laughs> no, we do not have that. Yeah. Okay. And this isn't an, an addition to the fleet. It's this just a replacement. replacement. OK. okay. And there's no no motion needed. There's no here. motion. No I action. can sign it. I just um, want you aware of something. It, it it'll show up probably in one of the financials, but it's okay. two months earlier. Carrie. Okay. Yes. Again, a rookie question. Mm. This is obviously far different than purchasing a customized fire truck, although right. it is customized because it's a police cruiser. Do we go through a bid process? What's we what's did. the methodology to get the best price for the vehicle? Yeah, no, they did, um, and we don't have to buy um, locally, but they did go out to bid, and that was one of the most competitive prices. Thank you. And repair is much easier, obviously, because it's a couple miles down the road. Okay. They give us priority, which is critical to it. Thank you, Kevin. So that's it. That's Any other discussion on on this? Go ahead. Uh, James Brewster, uh, two questions. One, um, are we standardizing on a look uh, for our police vehicles? We seem to have a couple of mismatches in terms of some look this way, some look that way. Can we standardize a look? Are we doing that? It's a good question. I will follow up with the police I, chief. I think that the 
The top, I think you're referring to the, the new, top the new more black one. So that my understanding on that is that we were we needed to buy a vehicle and we couldn't get it like the reverse color scheme. This is what we have. Mm -hmm. So that's why they ended up doing like the the skin or whatever you mm -hmm. call it. That's why that is that way. Is okay. Something to do with the, the availability. We got what we could get. I think that's what it came out. So, and, and my, I, I, I don't disagree with you. On that. And, and my second question is, uh, and I have pros this to, to Jason in the past. If we can order this with defaulted to daytime running lights, that would be great. Because I see our police cruisers riding around at dusk, no headlights on. Everybody else has got their headlights on, but our cruisers do not, and they're not visible. So if we could either get our officers to flip them on or get a vehicle that's defaulted to daylight, daytime running lights, that would be great. Sometimes that's more money and we have clear messages not to no, do any of safety, those things. Safety. Thank you for asking about the color of the vehicles. Yeah. I've been yes. meaning to ask that for a while. I'm wondering if we were just out in front on something that I didn't know about, but okay. thank you. It's for the camera <laughs> angle. It's for our Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to be off camera. <laughs> Okay, I think we're all set with police department truck. Uh, town charter. I'm just wondering how we want to go forward with this. We didn't get everything done in the charter committee meeting tonight. You know, I would just, um, I would just stick with the actual charter itself and the communication plan we're going to do later. Okay. So the actual charter. I think we have a copy of that. Right. And when we. So some people might not know, we met at 4.30 today with um, the Charter Committee to um, ask if they'd recommend moving forward to the Select Board with their recommended draft of a charter, the first charter. And it's very short, it's one page. And one question I was going to ask in the Charter Committee meeting tonight was, has is this all language that has been seen by the legislature the idea being that this is similar to language that other towns have that has been approved by the legislature um, yes everything with the exception of part of the manager one of the ma manager bullets was seen and and from approved charters that one is in uh the waterbury charter and they have okay. they've seen it this season and they didn't have an issue with it so i just so technically, yes, the legislature has seen every one of the four sections of our charter. And that's important just for the public to know that uh, we've been told multiple times mm -hmm. to make sure that the charter that we do present to the legislature <laughs> is language that they've seen before so that they can hopefully more quickly adopt our charter if that's where it goes and also because you don't want as a town to start creating new laws that then haven't been tested and might be litigated um for a different reason one you might not even imagine at this time so yeah. there's a real reason for that we're not just trying to make the legislature's job easier how does the board feel about the charter language i'm fine with it i'm, I'm fine with it i you know i want to be clear but i think i already am but just to be sure the local option tax clause in here is solely here to provide us with the ability to go to the voters and ask for any or all of these. It doesn't take an action yep. in any way, shape, or form. It, correct. That allows us to walk through a door if the voters want us to walk through the door. Yeah. That's and, correct. Thank and you. the voters will get the they will get the option to vote on the charter language and they'll get to the option to vote on the local option tax is a separate thank you that separate issue yeah. and and i would just add to thank you for saying that also that this is just a starting point there's lots of other things that we down the road can add such as ranked choice voting appropriations all kinds of things so um i think i can say this is that we opted to keep this very clean and simple uh initially to get it passed um carrie to carrie advised us that if it becomes too cumbersome um, we really need this document to really kind of move forward. And now that we have a manager in place, this uh, gives both Carrie and uh, our new manager tools to really kind of really take us forward. Because otherwise we're just, we're obligated to follow the state statutes, which um, we know are 
it's been problematic. Okay. <laughs> Do we need to take action on this? Do we need to adopt this language? Um, I, I think it would be great if you accepted this version of the charter um, okay. as presented on state the date uh, and vote on it. Yes. Is it necessary, required, problematic? It does say final draft of the charter. Mm -hmm. Is there an issue because we didn't technically do a vote with the committee? I don't want to. Right. We, we upset some folks, so I don't. I don't want to. Uh, you know, do we? Do we feel like we should get a, a formal vote from them first? As a I, I don't think you need a formal vote. Those are advisory committees, um, okay. and it was clear from the informal consensus that um, all but one were in favor of, and I think that person that left early was also in favor of this, of yeah. the charter itself. Okay. Just the word two not here. I just don't wanna. It's, yep. it's a great question you're asking, Laura. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, because we do have, you know, we put committees together to get the public mm -hmm. vote. And so I just don't wanna bypass them. We're certainly doing this do because we anticipated that we were gonna move through that yeah. charter. Mm -hmm. Committee meeting a little say, bit faster. I the other two, I've not heard any significant. I don't remember. I don't hear. I don't remember hearing any objections either. Yeah. But it, it doesn't change anything we're doing, and it doesn't put us okay. behind. If you want to vote on it um, at the next meeting, which is April six. I mean May six. Yeah. Yes, May six. But are we going to have another charter committee meeting? Is this, is Not this before May 6th, probably. Okay. We, you, we'll have one in May, but it won't be before yeah. your next meeting. So that's what I mean. It doesn't hold anything up. I take my lead from the chair. I guess my thoughts are, I mean, this language that we're looking at right now came out of the March meeting. It didn't come out of today's meeting. Yeah, so I this agree. was, I wasn't at that March meeting. You, you folks were there. Um, I would say... I would say adopt this. And it's pretty boilerplate, so I, I, do I don't I see why we should do anything other than accept it. And okay. I think that we had consensus from the other two members okay. of the committee. And, and Brian does agree that we need to move forward with this. He was just, I think, is more frustrated with the process, some of the other yeah. things, rather mm -hmm. than the language. Mm -hmm. Okay, in that case, I will take a motion to accept this um, draft charter. I'll make a motion to accept, accept the uh, draft of the charter on 422-24. Great. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the uh, draft charter language as presented? Aye. Aye. Be Aye. Una unanimous. Okay, thank you. Do you want to speak to communication? Um. Communication for the charter, or do we want to oh, just? Oh, um, no, I'd rather have. I mean, our communication plan for the charter is to have two public here um, meetings, the informational meetings this summer, um, and then start also doing some smaller outreach. But we haven't, we haven't gotten approval from the committee on that. That's what we ran out of time today on. So, so let's wait. Overall, time. that's still the plan, yep. um, and to have the vote in November. But we have not formalized the rest of the plan. Okay, great. Okay, I'm going to move on to highway update, and this is I'm passing this on to you. Yes. Yeah, so um, this is as promised. That we've had multiple. I'm sorry. I just passed it. it on to you, and I just cut we you off. We both talked about it. We didn't really. Um, you know, we didn't write a script with me. This is something we've been talking about for a little bit. So um, about, a, well, a couple months ago, right after uh, we lost Gilts Road, so I'm going to start with that one. Um, I had agreed, um, which it seemed like a good plan to update the folks and the select board once a month, every month on where we're, we're at with that. So that's a really large culvert that we lost. Um, you can't just go to a culvert store anywhere in this state and get a replacement. So I know that there's some frustrations. We've, we've fielded some calls. When are we gonna replace that road? Know that it is, um, so period, punctuation. Know that it's a priority. Um, every single week I've talked to Kevin about this and Tyler Mumley. Um, late last week, I signed a contract uh, we went out to bid for the work, so I'll back up, and we got two bids in. 
Uh, we were trying to work with, they were very close in price, but we were trying to work with the lower bid because they were very similar products. Um, but the person with the lowest bid came back and couldn't get to us, um, possibly even until next year, which was pretty unacceptable. So we then pivoted to work with um, the acronym CL, their concrete specialist. CS, yeah, it is CSI. I was thinking that was wrong, but. Um, I did sign a proposal. <laughs> um, I signed a proposal last week to get in the queue. So they are now engineering our specific culvert. And I keep stumbling over that word because it's technically called a bridge. It's such a large span that it's actually a bridge that has a curve and a flat bottom. And um, so we signed that. We're going to get in their schedule. And I'm hopeful that that as they promised would mean that we will be able to replace it in 2024. Um, that being said, we still have to go out to bid. And you'll see this bid for those of you that pay attention to what we put out to bid for the site work. So you have the engineer work and then you also have the site work of putting in this rather large uh, unit. So it's a process, we're, we're on it, um, and a lot has happened in the last two weeks. Um, and also FEMA continues to grind forward slowly um, on what it will cover from that flood that caused the uh, the washout. Um, spring maintenance is something, okay, sorry. Yes, please. Jerry Throne. Uh, so that means that uh, the town is purchasing the culvert and will give it to the contractor to install? Yes, yes, I believe that's true. I mean, we're going to work. It, they have their own engineering um, teams there, as you know, because I think you've done commercial projects, but we'll work with the site contractor. Okay. We're uh, not putting it in, I guess, is my point today. Can you tell me what the approximate span is? Um, I think. Well, so if it's, if it's, if it's probably, you know, 15 feet, yep. you could put in a temporary bridge. Yes, we could, but we asked for prices for temporary and the availability of temporary bridges. And whoever is at Jim Jones, you need to mute your Zoom, please. As soon as you hit the space button, it comes undone. Um, what was I lost track? I was confused. Uh, you, you, you were saying that. Um, uh, you, you thought about a oh, temporary, you, you thought bridge. About temporary right. bridge. So you, you, that was suggested. It was an option. Want, yeah, mm -hmm. but it's um, it starts at about two hundred thousand dollars, and given the um, talk to me afterwards. Okay, well, I, I don't know that we would want to. They they promised us early summer, so I don't know that it's May. You know, so I guess I will. I absolutely will talk to you. But if it's a fifteen foot, eighteen foot span. It's not that small. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. Let me know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we can talk. You yeah. certainly can educate me. I don't pretend to be a project expert here. So, but we'll talk to Tyler. Um, but just know we're working on it. I know it's a huge inconvenience because um, we're also replacing Walton Bridge. And <clears throat> there's a lot of people going in places they shouldn't go and going farther than they need to go. Um, but it's a, pro it's a priority for a lot of reasons. Um, the other thing is we didn't, which I did not have time because we had some more time sensitive things to consider. Um, I have not prepared a formal manager report, um, but the Department of Public Works, in which we call Highway Department here, has been regularly providing us with weekly updates about what their plans are. I have plans um, or a, a written plan from the Highway Department about each specific thing that has been brought up as areas of concern, um, ditching, grading, filling potholes, of course, it's hopefully taken care of by grading, but, um, and also we went out to bid for paving recently. So the work to prepare each road before we can pave it um, is something that we're evaluating at the same time. So I was just gonna provide the yeah, Overview. no, it's good. It's nice to see this. Nice to see the plan that Kevin's put together. And on the ditching in particular, we've had multiple questions about ditching and I would and grading. Uh, be nice to know what their plans are on grading and moving forward. And 
I know there's been some questions from neighbors of mine about tree and limb removal on the mm -hmm. sides of roads. That would be something else to add to that, it's to that list. Sweep aprons? Excuse me? It's a sweep aprons. What is that? Sweep aprons? Um, Repair washout sweep aprons? I think that has to do with, like, during the winter and a lot of debris on the road gets pushed to the edge of the road I and think you have to, yeah. you don't want the berm there. It creates water yeah, issues. Yeah, I think that's what. But I can ask him if it includes other things. I'm not no, sure I what he's that's... referring to including there. But so he gives gives us now, and I relay it to the select board, village <laughs> ditching, um, Davison Lane, Sand Hill, Upper Cottage, Street, Beacon Hill, Lower Elmore, and Spring Hill Road, for instance. Line striping, we have gone out to bid. We know we need to do the crosswalks and the stop lines, but you can't do that until the average temperature of the road is much warmer. Otherwise, when you put it down, it will look great for a little bit and then it'll just come off. Um, so I know it seems like it's warm, but the road surface temperature is not warm enough for that yet. Um, and we're aware of that. Um, and the ditching, they're going to start. And this is not where they're going to end, of course, but uh, Stagecoach Road um, by Cags Fallen, Campbell Road, Caddy's Fall Road itself, Randolph Road, Repair Washed Out in Coal Hill, and uh, as Laura just alluded to, the sweeping <coughs> of the aprons. And they have numerous trainings scheduled for the coming month um, and are providing me and the select board more updates. So I think this is going to evolve both for the residents and for the select board as um, they get more accustomed to providing updates and more frequent updates. Then um, we can provide it to the public, especially when if you didn't see it, see them doing work. There's a hundred miles of roads in this town. You probably don't know what they're doing all the time. Um, so you might miss that they're actually doing something and assume that they haven't done anything. So, yeah. Anyway. And as you alluded to, Walton, Walton Road Bridge is, um, is out. And so there's a lot of extra traffic in Mud City and up Fontaine Hill and Cody right. Hill. And, um, and that's like a three month duration event. So, yeah. I mean, and that's hopefully what they're gonna reach. But. Yeah. I was, I think Cody, I think Cody, I think Tony had his hand up first. Yeah, Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. So I actually called uh, Derek Small last Monday when they took them bags off the signs going to Walton Road. As I watched the traffic double, the road was impassable already. Okay. Which the road? Trans Cody Hill. The transition from pavement to dirt, there was potholes like this. That's no exaggeration, okay? We don't see a grader up there, maybe every three weeks. So I called Derek and tried to reason with him. And I got no reason with him because he, he just automatically thought that I was looking for service. I'm not looking for service. I'm looking to have our roads all over town reasonably maintained. They're not there and they're not gonna be there with the crew we got. I've got six pictures on my phone of a culvert that they fixed on Cody Hill or, or White Birch Road. It's sad, very, very sad workmanship. I'd like to share that with the board if you're interested. If you're not, then we'll just keep on going like we are. You can send it to me and I will forward it to them. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't. I don't blame the workers. Maybe they don't know how to do it. Maybe they're trying. I don't know. Something seriously is wrong with our crew. That's all I can tell you. To me, this here is unacceptable. If that's all they do for fourteen people, that's unacceptable in my eyes. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. James Brewster, Morristown. Um, if we have an item that we think needs to be addressed, um, like I see one up on the Elmore Mountain Rail that I think should be addressed, mm -hmm. where do I send that to? I mean, I can sit here and I can tell you guys, but. You should probably send it to me um, and Kevin if you have it, but definitely me or me and Judy. Okay. We will make sure that, um, Thanks. that it gets to highway. That's a good Carrie Johnson. I'm not. 
Any questions from the board before I move on? No, I believe there's one more. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Alan Ward, Marshtown Corners, Fontaine Hill Road. Um, I think that we should do away with this superintendent deal for the road. We don't need that position. I think take the one out that's foreman over there at Derek. He should just be an employee. He has no idea what's going on. He really doesn't. And replace these guys with one person to be a boss for two jobs. We don't need these three guys. I think that's what we should be doing and thinking about. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Uh, Tom Flutie, Marsville. I'm going to follow up on that. We have nine workers on our, on our highway department. We have two foremen and we have one supervisor. Four of those workers take care of 8.9 uh, miles in the village. Four workers and a foreman, 8.9 miles is all they're responsible for. I would like to have uh, Mr. Burroughs here to justify that. Not now uh, and not to me. He's gonna have to justify me when we come budget time. He's gonna have to justify it to that fellow right there in a couple of months. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Right, but as a follow-up to the three different conversations in the manager form of government, um, we're not going to talk about specific personnel at a public meeting. You can make comments in general. You can send them to myself. You can send them even again at budget time. You can keep saying this every meeting because much of the information you just shared was repetitive, but we don't talk about personnel in open session. We're not going to do that. And, and you can debate it with me no, no, if we want to meet, no. but this isn't the forum for personnel anymore. I know you guys did that before we had the manager form of government. It's not acceptable to do that. And my point was for the department heads to justify it by going. Yeah, to I got that. Not bringing it out here. Yep. I don't want to bring it out here. I, I'm not bringing it out here. I'm you, just telling you've you. asked me that in the past, though, so I guess I wasn't sure if you were including that tonight as well. No, so no. We're, we're just not. I just want to be clear <laughs> so we all have realistic expectations. No, I understand. Okay, that's, good. I, that's where it should be, and I think Perfect. that's where it will get cleared up. All right. Okay, awesome. thank you. I think we're going to move on. So I'm going to move on to approving the warrants. Make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. Got a motion by Richard, second by George. All those in favor of any discussion about the warrants? Aye. Aye. We've all signed. All those in favor of approving the warrants? Aye. That would Aye. be unanimous. Community comments. Go ahead. Uh, Evelyn Throne. A um, couple different things. Uh, as far as the Oxbow Park, um, I would make this very short because I know we're going to have a lot of talk about the full range plan and I think that's a really good idea. Um, I hope that it starts in everybody's mind the idea of slowing the river down and that's really true with with you can do it with beaver dams on you know that would be the natural way that it happens you can do it with weirs which are a, a man-made form of beaver dam uh but but to just to just plant and then hope that when the water comes that it helps i think i hope that we look at ways to slow and actually maybe even Te temporarily at times flood certain areas so that that's how the water doesn't keep going downstream so fast. Um, also, there was uh, about the highway department, I guess. Um, there, I've noticed that at the beginning of the year when they first paint the walkways, the, the, the striped walkways, the crosswalks, um, that, that it's nice and obvious by the end of the year it's a bit of a hazard to walk around in this town because the like part half of half of the stripes are gone or three quarters of it you can barely see where they are i thought there was a comment at one point that there would be more there was more heavy duty paint that they could use but that was more money i think i don't know if that's true or not but i just would like that issue looked at because I feel like it's a real safety issue. It's an issue that the town looks better 
if the stripes are good, it looks like a maintained town. And I mean, I walk constantly around town and it, it's, you know, it, it would certainly help my well-being. And I think it's, it's important financially to cover yourself in a town too, to have something like that be done right. So if there's a way to do it so it lasts longer in a year, I'm all for it. Thank you on both of those points. Well timed. Yep. Go ahead. James Brewster, um, while we're on the topic of painting, um, I guess it wasn't on my mind before, but it is now. Um, I would advocate, and I, I think it's Maple Street, um, headed out Elmore Street. Um, there are parking spaces on the right as you go from Maple Street out Elmore Street, out past the dentist's office before you get to the bend. I would ask that those not be repainted and that those not stay parking spaces. That's a really dangerous section of road and it's really, really thin. And when you've got the cattle trucks coming down there and you're going up and you've got, you know, it's just really dangerous. And I don't believe that it's the town's responsibility to require or to create parking spaces for those residential buildings. Um, not to mention that if you were to travel up and down that road as often as I do, you would see that there's rarely anybody ever parked in those spots. So to decrease the safety to create parking spaces for people that don't ever park there doesn't seem to make sense. So I would love to see all those parking spaces go away, move the yellow line right down the middle, give a bike lane on either side. I just, that's something I'd like to see, thanks. Thank you, yeah. I've often wondered what the history on those parking spots is too. And I don't, I think that yeah. it's probably, it wasn't always that way. Yeah. So. Hmm. Any other comments? Go ahead. I wasn't gonna talk about uh, pay my Identify money. yourself, I'm sorry. But since it was brought up, uh, Jerry Throne. <laughs> Thank you. Do um, uh, town employees uh, 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 install or paint the pavement markings? Or is no. that? No. So that's uh, a contractor that does it that? Is. Okay. So then I would suggest you look into thermoplastic pavement markings, which last a lot longer. Number two. Uh, about a month ago, uh, we heard about the Walton uh, Road Bridge, and uh, Mark Cody mentioned at that time that the, uh, the bridge on Bridge Street over here, Little Pony Trust, was uh, uh, rusting. And that's a, uh, uh, a bridge that's not painted, and it's, it's supposed to uh, not require maintenance. But uh, because he thought of salt that was being sprayed and applied, that that was causing uh, 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 deterioration. So I went and looked at it. And sure enough, uh, there is thick rust pack that you can take with your hand and remove it and other areas where it's somewhat adhered. But I'm bringing this up because he brought it up and I don't know if anything else has been done since then. It's a serious maintenance concern. Thanks, Jerry. What bridge was that, Jerry? That's Bridge Street. Bridge Street. Oh. Bridge. Uh, the the Favro, thank you. Yeah, Favro Bridge. My final say. Uh, as well, identify uh, yourself. Some you, sorry. Tom Cloutier. Some of you know that I uh, do uh, sub teaching in uh, quite extensively, actually. And my main job as sub teaching is uh, to, pre to prevent harm from any children. That's the main teacher's job. Teach them, then comes in second. I'm getting to is the soccer field that is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be used this summer uh, for young children to learn how to play soccer. I, I was down there yesterday and the other day and the day before that and walked that soccer field. There are stones there the size of golf balls throughout that soccer field. There are wood chips the size of quarter throughout that soccer field. Tom, just for clarification, this is the lower deck or the upper deck? This is the upper, this is where the soccer field is painted is, right is now, presently. upper deck. Upper deck. That's where it was flooded and it left all these nuggets of rocks and wood chips. And if you play soccer, you do sliding tackles. And uh, I'm sure you know about sliding tackles. This is where the child goes down in the knees 
and to on the ground and slide for that ball. There is going to be injuries down there with these kids because of those rocks. You cannot slide on rocks. You cannot slide without injury on these wood fibers, whatever they are, wood chips. And to allow that to continue in charging 200 bucks per child, I understand, with the field down there that's half the size of original, of a normal soccer field, is doing injustice to the town and to those kids. I have contacted the capital soccer president or director. I haven't heard back from him. I'm not sure if, uh, if uh, he's been advised that that field is not anywhere near ready for children. Thank you. Seeing no other, I do have a, is that a hand up? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, yes, I just, I just wanted to clarify, Anna Green, Recreation Coordinator, um, that the Capital Soccer Camp is not happening at the Oxbow Field. Um, I was, that was brought to my attention and I just wanted to make sure that the public knew that. I'm aware of the, um, the plan was to play on the lower deck and that's not happening, um, but the camp is not happening at the Oxbow at all this year, so. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Anna. Yeah. Would, that, would that mean the swing is not going in also? The... We have not made any decisions about the swing because I need to talk with uh, Todd about that because the revised uh, requirements added about $3,000 to the cost of the whole program, which is outside the budget. We had fundraised for that, so it wouldn't cost the town any money. So I'm going to try to find out um, if we can compromise with that, but I have not done so yet. To replace Stay the swing at the it. exact spot where the swing was washed away mm -hmm. from, the, from the last flood seems like a no-brainer that you would not do that to save money. It does seem like a no-brainer. There's many, many things that we've been doing here that are um, time-sensitive, like okay. the vicious dog hearing. We had to act on that. I would yeah. say that took conservatively half my week last week. All right. Um, we're getting FOIA requests and requests for information on a daily basis. That All also right. takes an in order, it takes a lot of time to respond to. So these things are great. Nobody. I mean, to, in all seriousness, no one wants to not put a swing set back. I just have to make sure we're going to do it within our permits. I would okay. stay tuned. Right. This is all part of that, that plan that we yeah. obviously need to do for the Oxbow. All There's right. many components gotta, to it. This I is think, just one part. Of it. I think maybe somehow the public's got to get rid on it. I mean, and it was really nice to know that the, they're not going to have it down there. I don't know where they're going to, but the I field is already there. there. So it's a right. great relief. But, oh. I haven't given up forever. Just not right now. Okay. okay, I'm going to move on to schedule. We have um, on Monday, May 6th, is the next select board regular meeting at 530. On Monday, May 20th, that's what's on the agenda right now. That's a Monday, it's a Monday night, obviously. Uh, on Tuesday, it's my understanding, will be the next school vote. So that select board meeting will likely change. And uh, at this point, we don't have a definite date to for it, do we? No, I, I was hoping if at least the four of you here, if you could make the 22nd, the Wednesday, that would be helpful. I think we're going to need to approve bills. There could be some other things going on, of course. George, I George cannot. you cannot be here on the 22nd? Richard? But I couldn't have been here on the 20th either, so it's... Okay. <laughs> so what, there's a 23rd? Oh. Yeah, you I'm going out? for the week. Okay. Yeah, and I can't zoom. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. Um, I can be available. I think Chris was available, but can we wait till the sixth to make well, a we decision? We can. Then we should take another poll. So because... just so the public knows, then mm -hmm. the twentieth is not likely to be a select board this meeting room because be for those of you that might be in the audience that aren't certain why this room is used for elections and it's hard to set up elections and have a select board meeting the yeah. same day. So, and then the next Monday is Memorial Day, which is right. Yeah, the next, yeah. Okay, I'm going to move on to other business. 20 seconds of DRB meeting. Okay. So, okay, thank you, Todd. Never mind. 
So for those of you on Zoom that didn't hear that, the 22nd won't be available either. There's a DRB meeting in here. I am then going to move on to other business. And um, we are going to enter, we're going to continue the vicious dog hearing. And that will go into deliberative session. So I'm going to have to ask. And I also have a couple of quick executive session items. OK. Do we need First motions time. for this? Do we need a motion to go into deliberative yeah, session? Yeah, both of them. So I need a motion to go into deliberative session to continue the vicious dog hearing. I'll make a motion to go into deliberative session to continue the vicious dog hearing. Do I have, okay. I have a second? So I have a motion by Richard, a second by George. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. I'll make the motion to go into executive session. Personnel? Do you want me? Um, Yes. Yes. To include Carrie and Brent. To include Carrie and Brent. Brent, don't leave. Brent Raymond, don't go anywhere. Okay. We're including Please. you. Thank you, everybody. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. You want to see my pictures? Tony. Tony. No, Tony. No, one second. We're gonna, we're gonna do this. Just hold it. Discussion. No discussion. All, all those in favor of the motion is presented? Yes. Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Carrie's our contact person. Just that one? Okay. I got a little money. Yeah, you're welcome.